Usually, a textured surface is something we try to avoid in our 3D prints. Zits, blobs, stringing, and poor extrusion all give us some of the worst surfaces known to mankind. Well, at least the 3D printing community. But you know, there are times where a textured surface could really enhance model appearance and the functionality. That's where Creality Prints Fuzzy Skin comes in handy. Applying fuzzy skin to your prints can add a nice furry look to what would typically be a smooth animal figure. It can be used to add a texture surface to a functional part that may otherwise be too smooth to grip, like a handle. It's great for adding a decorative design to an art piece or a vase. Now, if you're printing a Christmas village, it can add a texture that mimics snow, or it can help print a gingerbread house that looks like it's fresh out of the oven. The possibilities are only limited by your imagination. Fuzzy skin can also help in hiding that nasty Z seam and other imperfections. In this video, we're going to take a look at the experimental fuzzy skin setting in Creality Print. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is your ultimate destination for all of your PCB needs. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional engineer, PCBWay has got you covered. PCBWay does more than printed circuit boards and assemblies. They also offer CNC cutting and 3D printing. With state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities, cutting-edge technology, and a commitment to quality, PCBWay is ready to help with all of your prototyping needs. Visit PCBWay.com and elevate your ideas into reality. Fuzzy Skin in Creality Print works by adding a layer of fuzz to the outer walls of an otherwise boring smooth print. Creality Print instructs your 3D printer to move the nozzle with a controlled wobble back and forth during the 3D printing process. The result is a slightly rough textured surface, but even with the additional motion brought on by the fuzzy skin features, it doesn't add a lot of extra time to the print in most cases. However, you can expect your 3D printer to make more noise while using the fuzzy skin. So let's go ahead and jump into Creality Print, take a look at the settings and features of fuzzy skin and see how we can put them to use. I'm Bill, and this is Pushing Plastic. To demonstrate the fuzzy skin, I'm just going to be using this simple 40 millimeter cube. I have one set so that I have three walls, zero top layers, and zero infill. That way we have basically a box with no lid. This will make it easier to look in and see what's going on. Let's jump back to prepare. The first thing we're going to want to do is come down here to experimental. We'll click on that. If you don't see fuzzy skin, enable the advanced settings by clicking right up here. Now towards the bottom of the box, you'll see fuzzy skin. We'll enable it by checking the box and you'll notice that we get a few more settings. The first one is the fuzzy skin outside only. This is pretty much what it says. It will apply the fuzzy skin to only the outside surface walls of your print. Now, this is useful for models where you want a textured surface on the outside, but you want to maintain smooth walls for the mating parts on the inside. We'll discuss this one in more detail a little later in the video. The next one is the fuzzy skin thickness. The thickness determines how far the fuzzy skin will extend beyond the original model. Increasing this value will make your, the skin on your model rougher. Going too high with this will make your model look like a pine tree. Reducing the number will make your fuzzy skin smoother or closer to what the original looked like. So let's go ahead and save this as it is. And we're going to slice. And you can get an idea on how far beyond the model the fuzzy skin is actually working. So let's go back and we're going to change this thickness, the fuzzy skin thickness, to something ridiculously large like 5 millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and save. I'm going to slice this. And wow, what a difference. See how that's really nothing I want to print, that's for certain. But you can see what it's doing there. So I'm going to go back 
in and we'll reset that 0.3 as it was and we're going to move on to the next setting which is the fuzzy skin density now the fuzzy skin density controls the intensity or the frequency of the bumps on the outer layers in other words how close the fuzzy bumps are to each other a higher density means more bumps and a rougher surface a lower number on the other hand spreads the bumps out and has less of a fuzzy effect now adjusting adjusting the fuzzy skin density will also affect the next setting the fuzzy skin point is so let's go ahead and i'm going to change the fuzzy skin density let's see five something that high should really pack the bumps close together because it means you by density they, they mean how tight it is so let's go ahead and save this and we're going to slice it and now we're going to tilt so we can see exactly what's going on here now look you can see how tight that is it's a lot of bumps Let's go back and look at what it originally was at 0.8. I'm sorry, uh, 1.25. Go ahead and we'll slice again. And there you can see it's a lot looser. So the higher the number, the more densely packed those are going to be. Now let's go back and look at our very last setting for fuzzy skin and that one is the fuzzy skin point distance this controls the distance between the points where the bumps are applied and it affects the texture the texture scale um, you can use this value to set how close the variation in the bumps are like how they're distributed on the print surface a small value packs the bumps closer together and it gives a finer texture while a larger value spreads the bumps further apart and makes for a larger texture pack. so let's come in here and change this to 10 something really big and let's see if we can save and slice this yeah you see that's how better for you see how it's just going all over the place um not even able to register it try something a little bit more manageable i'm going to go ahead and change this to let's go three i just making these numbers up as i go right now. slice this and take a look this that's a little bit better you can see like how far apart the points are spread got a point here points over here another one over here and in between of course as you move down different layers but now let's go back and set it to its original setting of 0.8 head will save and we'll slice and now you can see they're tighter they're closer together so it, it just gives a better uh texture right there now another thing to keep in mind is when you're changing these settings one can affect the other one so if i come in here to the fuzzy skin density and i change that gotta make sure you put the leading zero in for when you the decimal let's go 0 0.1 you notice how it changed my fuzzy skin point distance to 10. if i come back and i change this they both go back to what they were but it looks like I can move this independently, uh, the fuzzy skin point distance. Not sure that's going to always be that way, but so far it's been working that way for me. So that's basically the settings. Let's go ahead. We're going to save these. And I'm going to go ahead and we're, we're going to do a print of a bear. I'll bring that in and we'll set it up. Okay, so here we have our bear. And why a bear? Well, when you're working with fuzzy skin, you got to print a bear. I think it's an unwritten law of 3D printing. So anyways, I'm going to use the basic settings, the default settings. 
and I'm going to go ahead. We're going to slice and we're going to print this. I'm also going to print one without the fuzzy skin so we can compare the two printed models. Let's go ahead and do that and see how it works out for us. There's our slice. Let's print this and see how it does. Looking at these prints, you can see that adding a fuzzy skin to the bear makes the print that much more appealing and interesting than the smooth bear. Now, it also works on dogs, birds, and it provides a surface to grip on for tool handles. Again, it's only limited by your imagination. Well, mostly your imagination. There are some things it doesn't handle well, but there are ways to work around them. So let's go ahead, jump back into Creality Print and take a look at those. Okay, earlier I said we'd come back and visit the outside only feature for fuzzy skin. But right now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna slice my model. And as you can see, I only have a fuzzy skin on the outside of the cylinder, the inside is not. Um, Let's go back and change this. We're going to turn off fuzzy skin outside only. Save this. We'll re slice and take another look. And now you'll see that we have the skin on the inside and the outside. So. We're going to come back. I'm going to turn that back to outside only. And we're going to run another print. Now you notice that this cylinder has a hole right through it. And this is where it gets to be a little confusing. So let's go ahead and slice. We're set to outside only for our fuzzy skin. But when we come through and we see our sliced model, you notice where that hole is. We have fuzzy skin on the inside because the slicer does not know what the outside wall is. It's coming right through the hole. There is a way to get around that. So if you're designing your own parts, one of the things you can consider doing, if you don't want the fuzzy skin on the inside, like we just saw, you could go ahead and put a sacrificial wall over your hole. I have this drawn at 0.2 millimeters, which is, uh, I'm sorry, 0.4 millimeters, one wall right there. I have that right in the design. So when I go ahead, make sure that we're on Outside only, save this, we're going to slice, and we'll take a look, and what that's going to do, it's going to block the fuzzy skin from getting on the inside, right like that. Now, it doesn't have to be a cylinder, it can be a square, a triangle, any shape. If you're trying to block the fuzzy skin from going onto the inside through a hole, you're going to have to put a sacrificial wall in there. Some other slicers do have modifiers where you can block that out. Reality Print does not have those modifiers. I have a basic cube, 20 millimeters cube on my print pad. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna slice this and it has the same fuzzy settings that we've used on every print so far. Now you can see where it's not taking anything or put, adding any fuzz to the top. It is adding it to all of the sides. I don't like the way it looks there, but that's the way it is. But you can see it just doesn't add it to the top. I think we can do this. I'm going to show you something and we're going to print it. If you want to get fuzz on all of your surfaces, go back to prepare. I'm going to click the model and I'm going to rotate. Look at it from the front. Hopefully, there we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this 45 degrees. And I'm going to set it right on its edge. You think that'll print? I think I can do it. I'm going to come in. And what I'm going to do is in my build plate adhesion, I am going to turn on a brim. 
Um, I usually don't use a brim, but we're going to go ahead and do it. Place this up. Now, I'd like to find out why it, it does that to that side. Um, but you can see that we're getting fuzz on all sides of the cube. I'm going to go ahead and print this and see if I can do it without knocking it over. But the point of this exercise is if you have a model that you want to add fuzzy skin to, and it's going to hit a top surface, what you want to do is reposition it somehow on your bed plate, whether you have to add supports, design supports into your model, whatever you have to do to get the fuzzy skin on those surfaces. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll print this out and we'll see what we get. There you have it. Can you think of ways that you can use fuzzy skin to improve the look of your 3D prints? Let me know. I hope you found the information in this video useful. If you did, hit that like button and let me know in the comments. I want to take a second and thank our friends at PCBWay for sponsoring this video. I have their link posted in the description. Give it a click if you can. It helps the channel grow. Smash that bell so you'll be alerted to new content in the future. Live your life one layer at a time, and if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing.